Hi guys, it's Glenn and this is How to Make Tea. So here we are in the kitchen, as you can see. Well, I don't know if you can really see or not, but anyway, we are. And um, okay, over here is a very exciting, boring, nondescript cabinet, but inside is lots of exciting ingredients. So we've got peppermint. That's the good stuff. I, I love peppermint. I hate spearmint. I never buy spearmint or I never used to buy spearmint. In fact, I tried like 20 different kinds of Moroccan mint and I hate them all because it turns out that it's spearmint. Um, but what I discovered was that most people don't actually like the crazy intensity of peppermint. So I buy spearmint now for, you know, the rest of them. But the peppermint is, oh, this is my favorite tea in the world. Actually, it's not really tea. So black tea, white tea, green tea, oolong tea, those are quote real teas. Everything else is an herbal infusion. But anyway, let's give this a, <laughs> let's give this a whiff, shall we? I'm not going to smell them all, but the peppermint is just like, you got to go there. Got to go there. Oh yeah. Great. Sinuses clear right up. Peppermint. Yay. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, next, next door, we have some Cinnamon orange spice from Market Spice in Seattle. I've mail ordered this stuff for years and I was just up there last month and actually got to buy it from the store for the first time, which is kind of cool. And then they make a rooibos version of the same tea, very cool. And uh, the label's wrong, it's not actually that. It's this one over here, the next one, it's that one, is actually a jar of hibiscus. Um, these are from uh, uh, Chado Tea, they're Brendan's Chai and they're Mate Carnival. I like to mix chai and mate and make a sort of a chai mate and then down here we've got like some ginger and some orange peel some star anise some lemongrass some uh licorice mint kind of a really nice combo licorice spice even better combo some that yeah the spearmint whatever and then down here i don't know if you can see it but i got some uh licorice root chips and just some little pulverized or sliced licorice root and here's like chips licorice root. Here's a, another chato tea. This is a really fun uh, rishi tea called um, tangerine ginger. I like it a lot. They also make a sweet mint that's really good. Here's some fresh cardamom. Um, these are a couple of teas I brought back from Seattle. Banana Zing and Seattle Surprise and some chai and stuff. Ginger peach, except some cloves. Um, then over here we've got some Tivana teas that are really good. They discontinued some of my favorites. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with Tivana, but they make pretty good stuff. And then here's some more loose teas, some peppermint, etc. Some actual black tea, some real tea, not the herbal fake tea. Uh, and then there's some of that chai mate blend that I like. And then over here, we have, um, so the truth is I actually drink a lot more vitamin water than I do tea, but I make tea to take places, so I drink I drink really a lot of Zip Fizz and I drink really a lot of Zenergize. Great stuff. Love it. Um, and then up here we've got, I use basically three kinds of sweeteners. Um, so uh, for just tea that I make for my students, I tend to use sugar. Uh, one, students really like sugar. Most of them do. Um, two, most students are, do not have type 2 diabetes. And um, three, sugar is, well, you know, less expensive. For tea that I make for my mom, I use stevia because um, she doesn't do sugar and she hates Splenda. For tea that I make for myself, I actually use Splenda or I used to use real, I used to use real fake sweetener. Now I use fake fake sweetener. I actually use um, Kirkland uh, fake Splenda, but it's um, sucralose, so it's the same stuff. I like it because it's not sugar and it tastes good. Uh, my mom says that sucralose puts holes in your brain so she used to like it, but she doesn't anymore. As far as I know, uh, it's supposed to be better than, you know, aspartame, which uh, people claim that Jackie Kennedy died of aspartame poisoning, I don't know. But anyway, all I know is that um, uh, stevia has like a kind of a bitter aftertaste to me, so I don't really like it. But I've been told you to get used to it, so I don't know. Anyway, that's that. Um, honey, I don't use very often, but occasionally for hot tea and, um, Tivana loves to sell this German rock sugar, which they say is kind of like a very neutral sweetener. It doesn't color the taste of your tea like other things do. I don't really taste the difference. And since I mostly make cold tea, dissolving this stuff's kind of a pain. So this stuff and the honey are great for hot tea if you're making that, but not too useful for cold. Okay, so that's 
the world of sweeteners. Oh, by the way, also up here is some boba, which is really fun. Um, you can get two kinds. You can get this five minute stuff, which is super easy to make. I love it. You can also get these like totally hard little pellets that take longer. I've had bad luck with those. I'm sure it's possible, but they didn't work well for me. But the five minutes, very easy. Boba's a lot of fun. I got some straws back here. It doesn't travel as nicely, so I make it more here than to take places, but uh, boba good. Okay, so if you're gonna make hot tea, which I don't do that much, but if you are, then we've got the great hot water thingy here. You just um, stick water in, it heats it up. Um, these things are the best. I used to have a tea press, which is really, the tea press was the greatest thing I ever found until I found one of these. And I don't even own a tea press anymore. It's got a little gasketed thing in the bottom. So you throw your tea inside and then this thing's just got two buttons, one to unlock it and then one, that was the unlock, and then one to serve up your hot water, brew tea. Got your little timer over here, three, four, five minutes, whatever you want. And then of course you've got your um, double borosilicate glass, glass, and the little gasket thing serves it right up when it's brewed, that's great. So I only use that for two things. One is either to make actual hot tea or two is if you need cold tea really in a hurry. But what I mostly do is I make cold water tea, which, you know, you can use one of these, tried and true, very nice. They work excellent. I just, since I make a lot, um, instead of sticking a, you know, plastic jar, I prefer to use, it's actually a glass hurricane lamp, but it's, um, it's just kind of a nicer thing to have sitting on your shelf with a bunch of tea in it. So I use that instead for a gallon, or if I just want a quart, then I just use one of these, uh, one of these fabulous Art Boy cylinders. Um, they work really well. Okay, so that's the story. Oh, and then water here, I have the Brita thing. Some people say Brita doesn't, isn't good enough, they want New Zealand water or whatever. I find that when you're comparing waters um, raw, so to speak, you can tell a difference easily, but when you make tea, I, for me, it's very hard to tell the difference, so I think the Brita's fine. So um, why don't we make some, so I use about, six teaspoons of tea or, or of herbal to, to for a quart, so 24 for a gallon. Um, I have a, so you can either use like a real teaspoon here, or you can use this Tivana teaspoon, which I think is just a tiny bit bigger than a teaspoon, but it seems to work pretty well. For actual tea, you would do it level, and for herbal stuff, heaping seems better. Um, so why don't we make some ruby lemon mint? which is just a fancy way of saying hibiscus, lemongrass, and either, you know, peppermint if you're a real drinker or spearmint if you're a wimp. So we'll break out the hibiscus. So we can either do 888 or we could do 666 and um, a little bit of something else, or you know, you could do uneven proportions if you wanted to mix it up, but actually a third, a third, a third works pretty well. So I'll just do one, those are a little light, but two, I don't have two hands, so it's a little bit harder. Four, to tilt the jar, five. Okay, there's six hibiscus, yay. Grab some lemongrass. Lemongrass is super light, so you can kind of go crazy um, with this stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then tell you what, I would prefer peppermint, but I know most people prefer spearmint. So let's, we'll do half and half. We'll split the difference. So we'll do three of like real peppermint sweet. greatest stuff. Okay, and then pff, spearmint, whatever. Okay, so that's 18, so I got six more of something. So, you know, maybe I'll just do a little hint of ginger. Throw a couple of these in. 
Ginger, you know, is, uh, can be pretty intense, obviously, but um, I love that tangerine ginger from, from Rishi and can be pretty good. Um, licorice, very fond of licorice. I like, you know, licorice, sarsaparilla, star anise. Those are all really yummy flavors. So I'll throw a couple of those in. And um, how about a little orange peel? Yeah, a little orange peel. That works. Okay, so I got 24 teaspoons of stuff. I'm sorry I'm making a mess. It's a little harder one-handed. I'm usually not quite this sloppy. Okay, and then a um, gallon of water. <laughs> sorry. Um, gallon of water. Stir it up if necessary. I think I did a pretty good job with the pouring part. And then for most stuff, two hours is pretty good. Doesn't really matter if the sun's out or not. So that's what this little piece of paper here is, is just to really remember when you, when you put this stuff up. So uh, let's see what do we got here. It is five to three. So I'm just gonna say three P. Out with the old time, in with the new. And I like to brew for two hours, pretty much. Two or longer. Um, with, with real tea, black, green, white, oolong, more than four, you're pushing it. It's gonna get kind of nasty. Um, with herbal, it doesn't really matter. You can probably let it go for quite a while. Uh, I wouldn't let it go over 24 hours, but four, six, eight, whatever, it's all fine. But two's, for almost everything, two's enough. For stuff like, um, for stuff like star anise, which, you know, is like these really hard seeds, two's probably not enough because it really needs to like, you know, get at this. And since you're not using hot water, it's not gonna get at it really too well. But um, for most things, two hours is fine. And then um, one other thing, since I do make a lot of tea and I have a lot of leftovers here in the freezer, freezer, okay, you got that part. I just make tea ice, which is great, partly because you don't want to leave if it's unsweetened or if it's got stevia or splenda, it keeps in the fridge for quite a while, but with sugar, it ferments pretty fast. So you don't want that. So I just make tea ice, which A, means you can keep it there for a while. And B, when I put stuff in the fabulous Bubba keg over here, everybody's favorite Bubba keg, yay. Um, yay. Um, you can just throw a tea ice in it, which will keep it cold for quite a while. So that's pretty much the story. Um, give it a couple hours, so 3 p.m., 5 p.m., we'll have some delicious ruby lemon mint, and that's tea brewing. Ciao.